Welcome back into this Lucky Section 13. In Lucky Section 13, we are going to conclude editing of videos using Adobe Premiere Elements. And in particular, we're going to look at adding montages, uh, multiple levels to uh, multiple timelines to our videos working with montages, pan and zoom, adding menus, and then finally we're going to learn how to burn a DVD. Should be great fun. Let's jump in. All right. Here we are back in our example video. We're going to start this section by looking at pan and zoom. It's really easy and works just like it sounds. Let's take this shot, for example, and make it zoom in over time. We start by putting the timeline pointer on the photo and then selecting it to put it into focus. We then come up here to the tools menu and select the pan and zoom option. Pretty straightforward here. There are two frames in the wizard, one labeled one and the second labeled two. We set the first one where we want the image to start and the second where we want it to end. Come down here to preview our finished product. Okay. That looks pretty good. We'll stick with that. Better do a save. Pan is just as easy. Let's split this panorama and then leave the first half full while we do a pan across the second half. First we cut the photo into two approximately equal length segments, leaving the first one untouched. And now we come up here to do a pan on the second. Yeah, slide this first frame over here, slide this second one over to the right, and jump back out and preview the whole shot. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. It's so darn easy. Okay gang, but a word of caution on the use of pan and zoom before we go too much further. Spend a lot of time setting up your photograph and then cropping it properly in Photoshop to get the composition right. Let's not destroy that composition with our pan and zoom, all right? Uh, let's be cognizant that when we're panning and zooming, we're going to maintain good composition rules. All right, just, just a quick word of caution. Okay, now let's move on to levels. Levels in Premiere work very much like they do in Photoshop. You start out with blank canvas, and as you add content, that content blocks out or blends with the stuff below it. As an example, let's go here to the end of our movie. The narration down here talks about us starting to get tired and our basic sprint to home after four weeks on the road. Well, I grabbed this image off the internet, which I think complements our story very well, and added this little text to it. Now let's add it to our movie as a new level layered on top of this map image. Easy enough. Let's bring it into Premiere and drag it to Video 2 Timeline. Fix the length and then click on it and resize and reposition. Ta-da! Just that easy. Remember, as many levels as you like and you can also come up here and change the relative opacity of a level. Remember, you can also change the relative volume of any auditory level. Just that easy. Okay, now do you know how I make these talking heads up here in the upper left-hand corner, which you sometimes see? Sure, it's just an added camcorder level. Added it to its own timeline. Clicked on it, resized and repositioned it, and here I am, up talking in the corner. I can easily do the same sort of thing with multiple auditory tracks. Again, remember, as many as you like, change them, move them around. It's all big fun. All right, now that you know about levels, let's push the envelope just a little bit. In this movie, I currently have 13 pictures from Bryce National Park. By any definition, that's a lot of just sitting there watching a single thread of photos spin by. But what if we could kind of have them coming at us from different directions, different times, some even together? Better, right? Oh, come on. 
How do we do it? You already know the right answer. Start by pulling them all back out of the project into the assets folder. Nothing more than a simple delete. Now go ahead and add another video timeline up here. Let's just start dragging and dropping, resizing and adjusting durations. Pretty easy and amazing result. Nice little montage from what was previously darn boring stuff. All right, that pretty much does it for content. So let's add a menu to our DVD before we burn it. Menus are pretty straightforward. Just come down here to the Tools menu and select the Movie Menu option. I next come up here to this drop-down list and choose my movie theme. I think I'm going to go with the movie genre theme and this fairy tale template as I've used them before and they work relatively well. Premiere takes now a couple of seconds to go out over the web and get that theme. And then we get this very nice wizard to help us build our menu. All right, I start by adding my own image. You know, I really like that Buffalo Whisperer thing. So let's go out there and get it and add it to our menu. Next, I'll work on these titles. I'm pretty much a minimalist when it comes to this stuff. So I'm going to blank out this top two and just use this one in the middle. Oh, all right, that looks pretty good. One last thing, let's go out and add some background music and then we're ready to preview it. Okay. Very nice stuff. Very, very nice. Only one more thing we need to do before we are finished, and that's burn our DVD. Really easy. We, get be we begin up here under the Export and Share menu. There's our guy. Export to a disk. Let's select that tab and the DVD sub-tab and check out our options. Oh, man. That's a lot of stuff going on, right? You know what? Fine. When I'm overwhelmed with options, I just learn one trick and I stick with that bad boy. First, let's put a blank, read-writable DVD in the DVD burner of our laptop. Next, select Disk from this Type drop-down here in the bottom left. Premiere automatically goes out to my drives and looks for one with a blank DVD in it. Cool enough, Premiere's found my blank disk in the E drive. That's my DVD burner, so we're set. Next, a resolution for our DVD. Short answer, trust me, and just use 720 by 480. It works in just about everywhere in the world. Anyway, now just hit the burn button, sit back for about 30 minutes while your laptop converts all this to DVD format. Why so slow, you ask? Hey, Painting a beautiful picture takes time, and we are creating a masterpiece here, so let's just go get that cup of coffee and call it good. As an aside, it's a good idea to leave your laptop alone while it's doing this burn. Premiere seems to get distracted and likes to fail to burn if you're busy doing other stuff on your box. Anyway, after about 30 minutes, your DVD will pop out of your laptop burner, and you're ready to enjoy your masterpiece for generations to come. One word of advice from somebody who learned this one the hard way. Home DVDs do deteriorate over time. So please, on the label, indicate when they were created. And about every five years or so, copy them over again. Just going to save you some anguish down the line. All right, I'm hoping you're as excited as I am to go out there and start creating your own DVDs. But remember, we're going to start first with taking better pictures. We're going to take great photographs of our friends and families, of landscapes, of sporting events, all that good stuff. We're then going to do some masterful things cleaning those up and creating great imagery using Photoshop. Finally, Premiere is going to allow us to create just fantastic videos with what we've created got to be so exciting. going to be so, so exciting. I hope you enjoy. Now, um, before I conclude on this one, let's do a quick summary of what we did learn in this particular section. If you'll recall, we began with pan and zoom. Really easy stuff. Remember the wizard that had the two little 
rectangles in it, one labeled one, one labeled two. You simply mark one where you want to start and the second one where you want to end, and it fills in the rest for you. Magic, magic, magic. We then created that montage by adding additional levels, um, video levels to our timeline and then dragging photos to the different video timelines, changing their duration, resizing them. It was all great fun, cool stuff. Then we made a menu for our video. Again, real easy, straightforward, just follow the wizard. And finally, we burned our video. Easy again, just remember to swap those things out or recopy them about every five years because they do deteriorate and I don't want you losing any of your precious media. All right, that concludes our final section on editing videos with Adobe Premiere Elements version 14. See in our next section where we wrap things up. Remember, keep on learning out there.